Let's do the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Uh, we're looking at our first conversation right here with the activities going on with the Labour Party and the end to uh, an alliance, the thought force and all that uh, Nigerians had hoped for. A former presidential aide, Donyo Kupo, has withdrawn from his position as running mate to the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, that's Peter Obi. Now, in a tweet that he made uh, on his Twitter handle, he said, I submitted my withdrawal letter from the position of the vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party to INEC. A replacement will be announced by the national chairman of the party shortly. I feel greatly blessed to have been part of the foundation of success for the Labour Party. Now, Donny Okukpe was standing in as the Labour Party vice presidential candidate to enable the party to form the largest political coalition to challenge the All Progressive Congress, that's the APC, and the People's Democratic Party. The party had submitted Okupo's name to beef the Independence National Electoral Commission's deadline for submission of names of a vice presidential candidate. Well, with all of that has happened, Senator Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed has emerged as the vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party as he was picked. And uh, let's just uh, run through a bit of who Senator Yusuf Dati is. He was a member of the House of Representatives between 2003 and 2007 and was elected Senator for Kaduna North in Kaduna State, Nigeria in April 2011, running on the Congress for Progressive Change ticket with a remarkable record, according to reports, of uh, credit of sponsoring important legislation in a very short time. Now, Baba Ahmed has four degrees a BSc and MSc in economics and from University of Medjugorje, MBA from University of Wales. Uh, and in 2006, he successfully completed his PhD studies, earning a title of Doctor of Philosophy at the University of Westminster. After his service year at the University of Agriculture at Biokuta, Ogun State, he worked as a project coordinator a base research and data service limited as officer two in the Nigerian security printing and minting company. We have a uh, Chris Nwakobia, Mr. Joining us this morning to make sense of all that's happening uh, with uh, Peter Obi's running mate, withdrawing from the race and, and all that encompassing, uh, you know, the new candidate for the party. It's good to have you join us this morning, Chris Nwakobia. It's my pleasure to be on with you. So let's get straight to it. Now, uh, you have Donyi withdrawing from the race. Not that he was actually in the race, but he was a placeholder. And there's been a back and forth with uh, the placeholder not being constitutionally recognized. But we also remember that uh, Festus Okoye, who's a commissioner for information and voter education of INEC, saying that the placeholder is a unique Nigerian intervention as much as there's no legal provision for it. What do you make of this, you know, provision? I mean, this new intervention? No, I think that uh, what we must know first is that oftentimes in this part of the world, we're used to semantics and, and several uh, appellations. Uh, we have seen vice presidential candidates withdraw before the election proper. Uh, we have seen vice presidential candidate a step down before the election proper. But maybe because of the genuineness of the uh, of the process at this point, you know, INEC said that uh, every presidential candidate must submit his or her running mate on or before the 17th of June. And so the parties were trying to meet up with the deadline and because they hadn't finished consultations. So they had to put out some names and, but the, the constitution recognizes the place where before the deadline for nominations, you can substitute your running mate. And that is what uh, the Labour Party had done with uh, 
using the Yokupe as a vice presidential candidate. Mm. The, the name or the, uh, the, the word placeholder is practically not known to our law. But can you withdraw a vice presidential candidate? The law says you can. And there are specific provisions to that. All right, Professor Chris, um, let's also look at, you know, uh, the candidate now that has been, you know, the Labour Party has eventually picked and going through his portfolio, uh, a lot of Nigerians and those who are supporting the Labour Party are very excited about his personality. Now, looking at that and juxtaposing it with the uh, responsibility of or the duty of a vice president, do you think that he has what it takes uh, you know, to become what it takes to actually perform the function of a vice president. Now before I address the the peak, um, Senator Dakiame, uh, let me say that uh, for the purposes of our listeners, that when the Electoral Act provides that you can withdraw your vice presidential candidate, it did say clearly that the only condition on which you can substitute uh, a validly nominated uh, vice presidential candidate is in two instances. One, if the nominated candidate dies, or if the nominated candidate withdraws from the race. And in the event, like what Dr. Doyokuwa had done, that he withdraws, uh, not as a result of death, but of volition, he has to write a letter to the political party and indeed the electoral umpire, INEC. Besides that, he has to accompany it with an affidavit to prove that he wasn't compelled or forced to do so, but he had done that voluntarily. Interestingly, Dr. Doyokuwe has done that in compliance with the Electoral Act. Now to the issue of uh, the peak. You have read a bit of his resume. Besides being an accomplished intellectual, besides being a profound academic, he has been politically effective and active. He has been a member of the House of Representatives. He has been a member of the Senate. He withdrew like uh, Governor Peter B. withdrew from the PDP presidential primaries, he withdrew from the PDP uh, gubernatorial primaries because he did not want to be involved in a heavily monetized process. So then we have two candidates who are uniquely canvassing a new regime for our country, not only in terms of electoral process, but in terms of leadership, I think that Peter B couldn't have come with a better pick. And I see the excitement in the public space. Nigerians are excited about the fact that we have a unique ticket that is ready to give the APC and the PDP a run for their money. Nigerians are excited because not only are the two candidates men who are not looking for their certificates, who are not alleged to have fake academic certificates or qualifications. These are young people who are committed to a new regime in this country, a regime of credibility, a regime of competency, a regime of cap capacity, and one that seeks to revolutionize how things are done in this country. I think that it couldn't have been a better pick. I'm, I'm proud of Peter B. I'm proud of Dakia Ahmed. I'm proud of the Labour Party. And I think that generally, the march to redeem and rescue our country from the morass has begun. Uh, so, so let's even get to it. Um, it. Some people say that this would be the crux of the matter. We understand that in the Nigerian politics, the North is almost indispensable as what a lot of people have believed and constantly believe as it has always been seen you find that uh, the north would always uh, some people say 
you know, have it and with all of that vote that you need. And so from the time of former president Olusha Gunabasanjo uh, to the time of good luck Jonathan and uh, also President Mohammed Buhari, you see that the North has uh, would chunk out that particular vote. And there's been a lot of theories or speculation as regards, you know, the attitude of uh, the other parts of the region towards election and her participation. So the question here is, do you see um, the vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party as that magnet that would attract the vote to the Labour Party? Not only is uh, the vice presidential pick of the Labour Party from the Northwest, not only is he an intellectual, not only does he have the capacity and competency, he connects with the people of the Northwest. I say this advisedly. It is not easy to become a House of Reps member from the state of Kaduna. It is not easy also to have been a member of the Senate. And then one, what we must note is that the highest voter demography if you like, in that same north that you talked about, is the Northwest. And he's from the Northwest. Also, very importantly, you can see that there's a sweltering hamatan sweeping through our country. Young people are rising up and speaking out. And here is a vice presidential candidate that is below 50 or just about 50 years of age. He connects with the highest voter demography, not only in the North, but across this country. Don't forget that those between the ages of 18 and 35 are about the highest in our voter demography. And then generally, people between the ages of 18 and 50 are about 65 to 70% of our voting population. So, those who sat with the presidential candidate of the Labour Party to decide on Senator Daki Ahmed were profound in their research and analysis. And the Swetri Hamatan, like I noted, is leading to a voter-based ballot revolution in our country. And the two candidates connect with a generation of those who are saying that things must be done differently. That is why, before the formal unveiling of Senator Dati Ahmed, the social media is awash with salutary commentaries. That is why Nigerians are jubilant everywhere. Because for the first time since 1999, we're having a presidential ticket that can take on anybody anywhere in the world. For the first time in the history of our country, we're having accomplished businessmen and intellectuals holding a common ticket. You're talking about a P2B who is intelligent and who established and successful in business. You're talking about a Dakia man who is established in business, is a proprietor and owner of Bates University, who has done well politically, He's a senator, he's been a senator, and you're talking about someone who has four profound degrees, both within Nigeria and outside. So we have a ticket to be proud of. And I believe that it will resonate not only in the north, but across our country. It's a worthy choice, it's the right choice. Nigerians are happy about it. And the Labour Party is set as a top force to take Nigeria out of the morass to promise. They're ready to lead a ballot-based revolution that will take this country away from the hawks of the past. Well, I, I like the fact that you have mentioned, you know, a ballot-based revolution. Uh, but if we look at the elections that are very close to 2023, uh, general elections, one of them is the Akiti election, uh, that happened, and we're looking forward to the Oshun state election. Now, one thing that was very dominant and very 
you know, prominent about that election is that you have almost a million persons who were registered uh, voters. And if you look at the number of persons who turned out to cast their votes, uh, it doesn't even um, make up. So we're looking at all, about 335, approximately, let's say 400,000, compared to about a million persons. So um, do you still think that you know, the number of, uh, yes, it's OK, we're getting the balls on social media. But will that translate to having actual votes? Because political pundits have said that uh, what happens in this election will be very determinant of what will happen in 2023. Looking at the fact that a lot of persons were anticipating a thought force, people will move away from the dominant political party of the APC and the PDP and will choose different options. But what we saw in Ekiti State is the fact that you had the APC winning that election. So um, are you still saying that um, there's a, a ballot revolution going on? Let me say very clearly that there is a ballot-based revolution building. What happened in the Kiti is different from what we're looking at, what, at in 2023. What happened in the Kiti is the fact that the two dominant parties are still the very uh, parties on ground. And uh, the P2B movement and the labor resurgence is uh, a sweating hammer different from what you have in the Kiti. But interestingly, even in the Kiti, uh, as opposed to the election before, the report said that there were more people and that the election was much more orderly. But what we're looking at come 2023, let me give you three bold instances. I think I said that within the past six to seven months, about 10 million fresh voters have registered. It has never happened in our history. I think has also said that of this number, about 6.7 million of them are young people in six to seven months. That hasn't happened before. And then very interestingly, you saw how INEC was made to extend, that's the top point, the, the voter registration protocol. That is because young people across our country are waking up and saying that through the ballot, they must take back their country. That is what is happening across our nation. That is the urgency of now. And that's exactly what we expect will happen come 2023. I said this advisedly, for those who are saying that, oh, the young people will not come out to vote. The point is, they have also never seen this kind of reawakening in our country. Young people are speaking up both on social media and on the streets. Let them stop blackmailing and lying against the young people. They are not just only on the social media. They are out there on the streets. They are out there registering to get their PVCs. They are out there in the marketplaces. Go around and see what is happening. Nobody is paying them to do what they are doing. They are riding vehicles with the Labour Party flag, they're right, the riding Okadas with the picture of P2B everywhere. Not necessarily because of P2B, but because they want a new Nigeria, a new thinking, a new tendency, and a new dispensation. And that is what the candidate of the Labour Party epitomizes. That is where we are. It is not so much of wishfulness mm -hmm. is not so much of oh uh, they're excited no they are young people who are saying that this must be done differently let me say very importantly that hunger is in discriminate of ethnicity it is in discriminate of the two major parties if you're hungry you're hungry whether you be of the pdp or the apc and so the man who's hungry wants a new deal. As a strike is indiscriminate of whether you're PDP or APC. If your children are at home for over four months, you want them back in school. So it is not about APC or the PDP. Nigerians are asking for a new deal. 
let me say likely that the question of insecurity when marauding headsmen, bandits or villains murder people, they do not murder the APC or the PDP person alone. They are out there killing Nigerians. And so when Nigerians are saying that they want a new deal, they're saying that they want something different from the old. So that is why what we have on our hands, what we have on the political amphitheater, what we have on the polit social political kaleidoscope is a ballot-based revolution that is sweeping across our land. And before November this year, Nigerians will be sure of who will win the polls, no matter how much blackmail, deceit, or treachery, or perfidy that the major political parties throw up. Mm. We know those who truly care about our country. We know those who truly love our people. We know those who the quest for the presidency is not about the fulfillment of a personal ambition or the, a situation where it's just about our party. We know those who are crying like John the Baptist in the wilderness. We know those who are walking like Prophet Muhammad, peace be unto him in Arabia, who are saying that we must fix our country, who are saying that we must make things better, who are saying that governance must be responsible and responsive to the people. And these people are those someone... behind whom the masses of our country are filing. They are the image and the paladins Professor Chris, but, but, but we're, looking, we're, we're looking at some of the current realities of our polity. And, and that's not to say that you don't have, you know, uh, the Labour Party or all that's going on. But we're talking about uh, what has happened. It's, it's just an example. We're also looking forward to the Oshun state elections. And we want to see what's going on. If, if the people are really sincere... And you have said that what happens in the states would differ from what happens nationally. But you also cannot take out the fact that at the national level, you also need the states to come together. So if you have uh, Peter B winning the presidential seat, what becomes of him uh, if he gets into power seat and then you don't have uh, lawmakers? I mean, you don't have, uh, 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 you know, legislatures uh, at the federal level from the party. So we're saying that, if you look at the, the body language of the people, the young people and every other person, the number of registered voters and those who tend out to cast their votes, it's not encouraging. And we worry for 2023. That's number one. And on the other hand, one would also think that with all of this boss, there would be a shift. Let's also not forget that the fact that people go out to um, you know, register and get their PVC does not translate into casting their votes on the day of elections. Political apathy has constantly dominated the, you know, the political scene. Yes, we know that we're progressing, but what significant difference can we make in 2023? There's a whole lot of significant difference that what is happening across our country will make in 2023. Let, let me say like I noted, that we have never seen the kind of uh, voter registration that we have had over the past six months. But, but it, do, it, it doesn't mean that these persons would turn no, out to cast I'm their coming. votes. I'm, I'm coming. All right. The, 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 the sweltering hamakan, like I said, the man, massive movement across our country is making the call to register and to step out when the election comes, a massive message. They're conjunctive now. Young mm -hmm. people are saying, we will register and we'll step out to vote. Now, let me say also that you were right in your observation regarding the kitty, but the numbers are increasing. Don't forget that as we talk, there's a massive twist in the social political debate. Before now, we didn't have the kind of movement that we have today, that is a significant difference. Now, as you and I talk, Labour Party is campaigning in Osho State because of the image and the resurgence of the party. 
there is a new, like my mentor Martin Luther King Jr. would say, something is happening across our land. And those who mirror what is happening across our land with the image of the past will be rudely awakened when the election comes in 2023. Because people are not going to register to vote because they need the voter ID, the voter card as an ID. Mm. People are registering to vote and they're speaking up and speaking out because they believe that through their votes, through the PVC, they can change the lot of this country. Through their PVCs, they can ensure that there's an improvement in Professor Chris Wakobia, we're being prompted a, to go now. That is a significant difference in, in the sociopolitical amphitheater. Thank you so much. We have to go because we're out of time. Thank you for being part of the show. We appreciate your thoughts right here on The Breakfast. The pleasure is mine. Uh, we've been speaking with Professor Chris Nwakobia, who's a political analyst and uh, public affairs uh, commentator. And that's it on Peter Obi's running mate and, you know, withdrawing from the race. And the new vice presidential pick apparently has been put out right there. When we return, we'll be talking sports. Please stay with us.